Today we are going to discuss risk ranking in Red Hat ACS. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Alish Nosek and I am the software practitioner located in San Diego, California, helping you navigate the world of Kubernetes. This video is part of a series about Red Hat ACS. I will have links to all parts of this series in the description below. Let's now focus on our topic for today, which is risk ranking. First, I'm going to discuss how Red Hat ACS computes the risk. After that, I'm going to show you where you can find the risk prioritization in the web UI dashboard. Red Hat ACS continuously observes and analyzes various objects in your environment. For example, Red Hat ACS collects information about used container images, about deployments, namespaces, clusters and cluster nodes. Based on the collected information, Red Hat ACS assigns a security risk score to these objects. And according to this risk score, the objects are then prioritized so that the user can focus on riskiest objects first. So how is the risk score computed for the different objects? This diagram depicts how Red Hat ACS computes the risk score. The risk score is computed for the individual container image components, then also for the container images. Then the risk score is computed also for the deployments which are running on your cluster, and also for the existing Kubernetes namespaces on the cluster. Red Hat ACS also assigns risk score to the individual cluster node components, to the cluster nodes, and then finally, to the whole cluster. Let's start with the risk score of the individual image components. These components are the RPM packages, Java jars, Ruby gems, and other components detected by the image scanner. There can be multiple CVEs found in a single component. The overall risk of a component depends on the number of the CVEs found, as well as on their severities. The more CVEs found in the component, and with higher severities, the more risky is the component. The sum of the component's risks found in a single image is then one of the factors that determines the overall risk of the given image. However, it is not the only factor. Red Hat ACS further increases the risk of the image if, among the components in the image, Red Hat ACS detects some well-known components which are considered extra risky. I listed these components here. You would find them hard-coded in the Red Hat ACS. Another factor that increases the image risk is the number of components included in the image. The more components there are in the image, the more risky the image is. Finally, the age of the image also affects the image risk score. The age of the image is determined by the creation timestamp that is part of the image metadata. Red Hat ACS assigns additional risk to images that are 90 days old or older, and this risk increases with every day beyond this 90 days mark. After reviewing the four factors that determine the image risk, let's now focus on how the risk is computed for the deployments. In Red Hat ACS, the deployments include the core Kubernetes kinds that are able to create pods, like for example, the deployment, deployment config, the stateful set, and the daemon set kind. The risk of a deployment is determined by several factors. The first factor is the risk of the images that are used in the deployment. We computed this image risk before. The deployments which use images with higher risk are themselves more risky. The second factor that determines the deployment risk is the level of network exposure of the given deployment. The deployments that are reachable from outside of the cluster, for example, via OpenShift route or a service of type load balancer, these kind of deployments are considered more risky than the deployments which are only reachable from within the cluster via a pod network. Next, Red Hat ACS can increase the deployment risk based on the deployment configuration. The deployments are deemed more risky if they mount volumes in read-write mode or if they mount Kubernetes secrets. The deployments are also more risky if they include containers that use Linux capabilities all sysadmin, netadmin, or sysmodule. 
Also, the deployments which include containers that don't drop any Linux capabilities are more risky. And finally, if there are containers which are running as privileged, then the whole deployment is also considered more risky. The next factor that contributes to the deployment risk is the number of suspicious processes that Red Hat ACS detected running in the deployment pods. These are the processes which are not part of the deployment baseline. I will be talking about deployment baselines in one of the future parts of this video series. The next factor that increases the deployment risk are the active policy violations. Here, Red Hat ACS considers the number and the severities of policies being violated by the given deployment. The more policies with higher severities violated, the higher is the deployment risk. I will discuss Red Hat ACS security policies in more detail in one of the follow-up videos. Finally, the last factor that determines the deployment risk is the level of access to the Kubernetes APIs that was granted to the deployment. Red Hat ACS evaluates the level of access based on the permissions that were granted to the deployment's service account. The risk score is only increased for the deployments that use an auto-mounted service account token. The final score depends on what kind of RBAC privileges were granted. The write permissions have higher score than the read permissions. If the service account has been granted cluster admin privileges, then the deployment will receive the maximum risk score for this factor. The risk computed for individual deployments is then directly used to also compute the risk for the namespace and for the cluster. The namespace risk is simply a sum of deployment risks of all the deployments which are running in the given namespace. The cluster risk is then the sum of all the deployments that are running in the given cluster. Red Hat ACS also assesses the risk of the cluster node components and also the cluster nodes. The risk of a cluster node component depends on the number and the severities of the CVEs that were detected in the given component. The node risk then depends on the risk of the individual components that are part of the node. After Red Hat ACS computes the risk score for the individual objects, it can then prioritize these objects based on this score. Let's take a look at where in the Red Hat ACS UI dashboard you can find this prioritization. In this video, I'm using Red Hat ACS version 4.3.1. If you go to the Vulnerability Management version 1.0 on the left side, and then to Dashboard, you can find the Application and Infrastructure dropdown, and in here you will find the various objects that we were talking about in the previous diagram. If I click, for example, on the object of type namespace, then I will get a list of namespaces which exist in this cluster. And on the right side in this view, I can find the risk priority column. And this column exactly shows the risk priority that was computed based on the several factors that we discussed before. We can look at the other object types as well. For example, you can find images here, and again, there will be a risk priority column. I have to say that because this view is located under the vulnerability management, I originally thought that the risk priority was computed strictly based on the vulnerabilities found in the image. However, as we discussed before, this is not the case. The risk priority is computed based on the vulnerabilities, yes, but it is only one of the factors entering the computation. There are also the other factors which influence the risk priority, for example, the image age and others. Specifically for deployments, Red Hat ACS provides a separate view. On the left side, under the risk, you can find a list of deployments which exist on the cluster. And if you click on a deployment, then Red Hat ACS provides you with a breakdown of individual risk factors for the given deployment. This example deployment is the riskiest deployment that Red Hat ACS found. Let's take a look at what contributed to the risk of this deployment. As we discussed before, Red Hat ACS considered that there are active policy violations detected in this deployment. Then there are also image vulnerabilities which were found in the images that are used by this deployment. 
This deployment uh, also is configured in a way that it doesn't drop any uh, capabilities, any Linux capabilities. This deployment is uh, reachable on the network, however, only on the pod network, so that is a lower risk. And then there are also some well-known components which are useful for the attackers, which were found in the images used by the deployment. There is also a number of components used in the image that is a factor. So there are 72 components in one of the images. And the last factor which contributed to the risk is the image age. In this case, this image is rather very old. It's 600 days old. Let's review what we covered in this video. We discussed how Red Hat ACS computes risk score. This risk is computed for container image components, for container images, deployments, namespaces, clusters, cluster node components, and also cluster nodes. Based on the risk score, the objects are prioritized so that the user can focus on the riskiest objects first. In the web UI, the priority can be found in the risk priority column in the vulnerability management section of the UI. Specifically for deployments, you can find a risk breakdown in the risk section of the web UI dashboard. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please feel free to leave your questions or comments down below. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing so that you are notified whenever I release a new video. Until next time.